In a region 15 billion miles from Earth so remote and dark that not even starlight dares to enter a device 46 years old, built in the 1970s, silently drifts. The farthest object ever made by humans is Voyager 1. It was never meant to listen, only to speak. It lacked a microphone and ears. There was no need for them. For a long time, it dutifully followed its path, sending home information about a universe that grows colder and lonelier with each passing mile. Then, one day, something happened. Voyager 1 shifted without warning. Its antenna turned slowly, deliberately not toward Earth, but toward a part of the sky that, by all known accounts, was empty. No planets, no stars, no galaxies, just a void. And then, something spoke. What followed wasn't just strange, it was impossible. A shift in direction where no thruster activity was detected. An identified data, a musical signal embedded in the transmission, and a 12-hour void that may have altered the very nature of space exploration indefinitely. This evening, we travel through Voyager 1's mystery, its impossible encounter in deep space, and what it might mean for humanity. Music. Voyager 1 was never meant for what it's experiencing now. Launched in 1977, built for a five-year mission, it was designed to take pictures of the gas giants. It did so with smaller processing power than a smartphone calculator, yet it continued past Jupiter beyond Saturn, past Pluto, and finally, in 2012, it crossed into interstellar space. From that moment on, it drifted with just one job, to send out data through the vast void. Its antenna remained locked on Earth. For decades it endured, its mission extended through the sheer resilience of 1970s engineering. But in 2023, something changed. The data from Voyager 1 began returning in a form that lacked logic. It was not corrupted but restructured. Its clocks began to drift, its orientation records vanished, and emergency procedures activated. But this was unlike any of the numerous glitches Voyager had survived before. This time, its systems did more than cope with failure. They reacted to something else, an unknown input. Not from Earth, not from its surroundings, and impossible to attribute to any internal malfunction. Voyager turned not at random, not slowly, but toward a portion of the sky that should have been meaningless. And that's when the real mystery began. The orientation shift wasn't just a software glitch. It was tangible. NASA's gyroscopes confirmed that Voyager 1 physically turned a torque event with no recorded use of thrusters, no power surge, no momentum from solar radiation, and no impact from a micromesh right. It was as if the spacecraft had chosen to move. Engineers simulated every possible scenario. Could deteriorated circuitry create a false torque reading? Could an ancient code malfunction with such precision? None of the numbers added up. This wasn't noise, it was precision. And then came the most disturbing detail. The direction Voyager had turned aligned almost perfectly with the theoretical region known as the Null Zona Pocket in space where gravitational fields cancel out, a mathematical anomaly never directly observed, and certainly not something a spacecraft with no sensors for detection should be able to find. Voyager was not simply drifting, it was holding its antenna steady, fixed on that area, as if something had commanded it to listen or as if something were listening back. Within a short time of reorientation, Voyager's plasma wave subsystem picked up a signal, not static, not random noise, a perfect frequency of 3000 Hz and changing, steady, rhythmic, audio engineers were brought in. Even the most skeptical were shocked. The signal pulsed with musical interval symmetry, palindromes, harmonics. It was composed, not accidental, and not natural. Embedded within the waveform was data though not the kind Voyager was built to send. Recursive fractals, number strings, prime chains, geometry, and constants calculated with precision beyond its instruments. Somehow, Voyager was transmitting information it was never designed to comprehend, let alone gather. Even stranger, the signal didn't spread across space. It was focused, confined, intentional like a whisper in the dark. Only Voyager heard the hum. Only Voyager responded. Music then came silence. For 12 full hours, Voyager 1 vanished. No signal, no heartbeat, no telemetry. At first, NASA didn't panic. Space is unpredictable, but Voyager had never gone dark. Not for 46 years, not even for an hour. When the signal returned, it wasn't the same. Its internal clock had not slowed or drifted it had reset. 
as if Voyager had stopped existing in our timeline, then reappeared from somewhere else. The new data packet showed formatting and structures that had never existed before. The probe functioned, but it was different. What had happened in those 12 hours? Where had it gone? Then ESAS Deep Field Microwave Background Team made a discovery. Cross-referencing Voyager's new trajectory, they found something hidden in the oldest light of the universe, the cosmic microwave background. A silhouette. A shadow matching Voyager's exact path. And it had been there before the encounter. Before the shift. Before the silence. The universe already knew. Somehow. Impossibly. The universe knew Voyager would be there. Voyager's transmissions continued, and researchers focused on one feature they could not explain, a constant tone of 30,000 Hz embedded in the message. It did not decay. It did not scatter. It did not behave like background radiation or electromagnetic noise. It remained flawless, constant, immune to the entropy of space. NASA brought in harmonic physicists and musical scholars to analyze it. Their verdict was unanimous. This was not random. The tone obeyed rules, rules of symmetry, musical intervals, mirrored timing patterns, and pitch structures corresponding to established musical scales. It was deliberate, structured, mathematical. What astonished analysts was that this tone was layered, as if hidden beneath standard telemetry by design such as an additional track on an audio file that will only play if you know where to look. Even creepier, when broken down, the structures of the harmonics looked like phrases for calls and responses, a composition that used silence as punctuation. In musical terms, it wasn't just a sound. It was a result. Then it came to a halt deliberately and abruptly as if someone had completed playing it. This wasn't interference. This was show business. A message through images rather than words in mathematics, motion, and music. Scientists got started after the tone changed dissecting the signal's core, stripping away the melody in search of meaning. And what they found only made matters worse, obscurity. A data layer distinct from anything Voyager was capable of producing mathematical recursion, fractal data structures, strings, and inconsistent hexadecimal formatting that violated NASA's procedures. It was as if the signal had been changed from the outside. But this is where things developed further stranger. The data included universal constants, accurately measured, far beyond Voyager's sensors, the fine gravitational constant, cosmic expansion, structure constant rates all to precise. It was as if the sender had used Voyager as a carrier, embedding a payload of advanced data within its standard signal. But then came the most profound moment. When fed into a quantum processor a Majorana chip being tested to identify emerging structure the signal reduced to a single output that could be decoded, a string. Not coordinates, not data, but rather an equation. No a sentence, are you prepared to observe? This was not a message sent in the old-fashioned way. It wasn't a call for help or a broadcast of dominance. It was an invitation and a question. The query prompted researchers to investigate not only the signal from Voyager, but the region of space it had turned to face. Infrared observatories across the globe fixed their gaze on a dark patch of sky. For weeks, they scanned the void for anomalies, distortions, anything. And then they saw it. A hazy glow with a softly pulsating halo. At first, barely detectable. It flashed not like a star, but like a pulse. It responded to solar flares. Not immediately, but with a rhythm, a delay precise enough to imply interaction, not coincidence. Every time the sun rose, the halo flashed back outward, as if acknowledging and reiterating the act of our star. And more disturbing still, the glow shifted. Not in position, but in regularity. It moved as though it were alive. Light didn't reflect off it. It produced no heat. It responded. What exactly were we observing? A structure? A field? A veil? No telescope could resolve its shape. But it didn't drift. It didn't fade. It only waited. And the more it blinked, the more it appeared aware. For months, speculation swirled that Voyager had received a transmission. But the theory collapsed. The manner. The. 
direction, the date none of it aligned with an incoming signal. Instead, all evidence pointed to Voyager's presence in that region of space. It wasn't that Voyager had detected something. It was that Voyager had sparked something. The idea was radical haunting but consistent. Voyager hadn't received a message. It had been noticed. Its arrival was unannounced, unintentional, unaware. Yet it was as if a knock had sounded on a door no one knew existed and something had chosen to respond. The absence of noise wasn't silence. It was communication formed through silence. A patterned response. The repositioning of Voyager. The unexplained rotation without thrust. The 12-hour blackout. The restarted clocks. All of it now seemed less like glitches and more like calibration. An adjustment. Not just to Voyager's voyage, but two hours. For nearly half a century, Voyager 1 traveled on, silent and submissive. It wasn't designed to discover intelligence. It wasn't intended to unlock doors. And yet, it may have done both. What began as a glitch became a routine. What appeared to be noise revealed a message. From silence a voice emerged. And here lies the haunting truth. Voyager didn't go searching. It simply arrived. And that was enough. It crossed an invisible threshold not only of space but of understanding. The rules changed. The laws we thought were fixed began to flex. And somewhere, from a dark location, something waited. Something that knew the rhythm and melody of prime numbers, the form of cosmic constants, the silence of mathematics. Something that, when touched by a 1970s machine drifting through the void, chose to respond not with fear, not with power, but with a question, are you ready to listen? That question now reverberates not only through codes and antennas, but through every lab, every observatory, every mind willing to believe the universe may be more alive, more aware than we have ever imagined. And if Voyager won a frail machine built before the internet could reach that point, then perhaps the next step isn't theirs. It might be ours. If this revelation disturbed you, moved you, or sparked your curiosity, keep the story alive. Share it. Reflect on it, and in your own words, answer the question.